Hey, what is up mortals? It is Davy Wavy, here with a new video for you. Welcome to Season 3 Part Number 1 of What If Izuku Had a Decay Quirk. I just wanted to greet you guys by just saying, sit back and relax, you're in for a treat. And so, we begin. Pacing down the hallways of UA, a blonde student swiftly made their way past all the empty classrooms to the teacher's lounge. This was his first time in three years of going to UA, he was invited to eat lunch with one of the teachers. The blonde third year, Mirio, opened the door to the teacher's lounge and found the teacher who had invited him there, waiting already inside. Ah, young Togata, I'm glad you could make it. Hey, I was surprised that you wanted to have lunch with me. Of course I would make sure to be on time. Mirio replied to All Might excitedly. It was here that All Might waited for Mirio to sit down in a chair before he continued speaking. Principal Nezu was supposed to be here for this meeting, but I asked to be the one to tell you myself. All Might explained. Huh. Why did Principal Nezu want to speak with me? Is it about the incident I caused yesterday? I didn't mean to cause a disturbance like that. If I hadn't used my quirk, then that other student would have been hurt in training. Although I can see why I could be getting in trouble. The entire class of 2B saw me without clothes due to my quirk. Mirio explained nervously about his fluke with his quirk the day prior. No, this isn't about that. I wasn't even informed about that. I... Uh, you, you are here about something else. You have been chosen to receive a gift. A gift? What's the gift? Mario asked, now curious. Uh, I need you to not get scared. All Might says before a poof of smoke appears unexpectedly. <laughs> Appearing from that puff of smoke replacing the tall, muscled man was a skinny skeleton of a man, with appearance traits vaguely similar to All Might. Mario jumped back, shocked and freaked out by this event. Oh dear god, what happened to you? You, you deflated! Mirio concerningly questioned. <coughs> I'm alright, young Mirio. I hadn't expected my time to run out at that moment, but this is what I was trying to explain. Is this a part of your quirk? Mirio asked, looking at his teacher's small frame. Yes, this is an effect of my quirk. What you are seeing now is my true form. This is part of the reason why Principal Nezu and I asked for you to be here today. Toshinori explained. What's the gift you were talking about? Mirio asked, still curious. All Might sighed as he prepared himself to finally reveal his secret to the student in front of him. It had been months since Principal Nezu had recommended this boy as one-for-all successor. Toshinori still was unsure if he was ready to give up being a hero, but he knew his time was running out. It was now or never. You see, the gift is my quirk. I have chosen you to be the successor of my quirk, Mirio. Mirio looked at the deflated All Might in shock and confusion. He couldn't find the words to ask All Might what he meant. With Mirio's stunned silence, All Might continued his explanation. My quirk has the unique ability to be passed on to another user. In fact, it was passed on to me by my previous mentor. Mirio finally spoke up, expressing his shock by blurting out questions left and right at the blonde skeleton. Wait a minute, I I'm so confused. You mean your quirk can be passed on to people? If the gift is your quirk, does that mean you're going to pass on your quirk to me? Mirio exclaimed. Yes, you, young Togata, have been chosen as my successor. You will be the ninth inheritor of one for all. Mirio was too shocked to respond, only letting All Might continue on his grand speech, going on further to explain one for all to the silent Mirio. From the combination of a useless quirk to pass on quirks and a stockpile quirk, the two quirks fused to form one for all. All Might went on his spiel explaining the origins of his quirk. Oh, okay. Uh, how do I inherit your quirk? Mirio asked excitedly. He was going to obtain his idol's quirk. Without a second to waste, All Might plucked a strand of hair and held it out in front of him. Toshinori used his quirk for a moment to transform back into his muscle form and instructed Mirio with two simple words. Eat this. Mirio fell silent at the realization that he had to swallow his hair. The following week after the students' internships, the students all returned back to UA with their newly gained knowledge and experience. Class 1A was bustling with the conversations of excited students sharing their stories with each other of their week spent with the agencies they interned for. Izuku sat near his friends Kirishima, Ashido, and Kaminari as they each told each other what happened while interning. It was so awesome to meet Sir Fourth Kind. I think Tetsu Tetsu and I left good impressions on him. Kirishima tells his friends excitedly. 
Oh, wow. What about you, Izuku? Well, I was in Hosu for most of the attack. However, I hadn't seen much of what had happened. I was able to save quite a few people along the way, though. Izuku said excitedly. He was proud of himself for being able to save people like his role model. No way! You were in Hosu? During that big attack? Kaminari asked, shocked. That must have been scary, man. Good work. Oh, wow. I heard that Todoroki and Ida were also in Hosu as well. Did you see either of them? Mina asked. Uh, I... I didn't see them there. I didn't even know they were in Hosu as well. Izuku thought back to last week, trying to remember if he had seen them or not. Come to think of it, where is Ida? He would normally be the first one in the classroom. Is he sick? The others all realized what Kirishima was talking about and finally noticed the usually punctual student was in fact absent that day. They heard the door to the classroom open. They all looked toward the door to see if Ida was arriving late, but found their teacher walking into the room. Sit in your seats, everyone. I have two important announcements to make and I do not plan to repeat myself. So you all better listen up, or you might as well leave my class now. The tired teacher stated to his class as he slammed a cup of coffee onto his desk. All the students in 1A quickly shuffled over into their proper seats and sat quietly for the teacher to make their announcement. Good. Alright, now that everyone's listening, I'll start with the first bit of news. As some of you may have noticed, we are short one student. Tenya Ida is currently in the hospital, and will miss the next two weeks of classes. This news surprised many of the students in 1A. Many of them were worried for their classmate. Aizawa explained that Ida had gotten into an accident during his internship. The only reason that he wasn't expelled was due to Manuel pleading with the school not to expel the student due to his own ignorance. With silence filling the classroom from the students' concern, Aizawa found it the perfect opportunity to add more stress to their lives. So Aizawa began announcing the second bit of news to the students. In other news, in two weeks there will be exams. I expect everyone to study and prepare for the written test and the practical exam. A few select students' faces paled upon realizing exams will be coming soon and knowing full well they would not be able to pass. Classes for that day continued as normal. After that day, everyone in 1A prepared for their exams. Students formed study groups and many of them worked hard to improve. During the two weeks, Izuku spent little time studying. He still had a few concerns about his quirk, so he decided to pay a visit to Recovery Girl to ask a few more questions about what happened with his hair. Izuku entered Recovery Girl's office to receive a sigh from the school nurse. You don't look injured. What brings you here? The nurse asked, quite bluntly. I had a few questions about how this happened to my hair. I didn't know who else to ask. Izuku explained nervously. I see. Well, lucky enough for you, I'm not busy healing your classmates, so ask away. Well, why did my hair change color? I know you said it had to do with my quirk adjusting with my body but why would it need to adjust? Furthermore, why now? I've had this quirk since I was a child, so why was it only affecting me now? Recovery Girl sat for a moment, thinking of the right words to explain her knowledge to Izuku. For the best response, could you tell me your recent usage of your quirk? Going as far back as the USJ incident? The school nurse asked. Izuku explained, however, that since coming to UA, he's been using his quirk more often, the sports festival being where he used it the most, almost ten times as much as he had throughout his entire life. Ah, that explains it perfectly. It's affecting you now because of your sudden increase in using it, Recovery Girl explained. But shouldn't my body already be adjusted to my quirk? I was born with it after all, Izuku questioned. While you're a unique case, this can be explained by your quirk's growth and power. Your body's used to using it how it was originally, weak and slow. But now your quirk is activating much faster and working on much bigger objects. Thanks to Recovery Girl's explanation, Mizuku was starting to understand his quirk much more, but he still had one last question. Unique case? Izuku repeated Recovery Girl's words in a question. W what do you mean? Well, your body adjusting to your quirk this early on in your training likely means your quirk either has a lot of potential or your body was not suited for the quirk. Based on what I've seen during your physical checkup after the sports festival, it's likely both. Recovery Girl explained. Izuka wanted to question her more, but he heard the door to the nurse's office behind him open, and an injured blonde student was carried in by their friend and placed onto one of the nurse's office cots. The student looked to be in one of the older years. Izuku guessed the third year. 
Midoriya was shocked when he saw the blonde third year had two broken arms, but still had a smile on his face. Looks like that kid got injured while training again. Izuku, it's time for you to leave. Good luck with your exams in two weeks, and don't get injured. Izuku was rushed out of the nurse's office. He had gone home after that, confused about what he should do now. He looked down at his hands as he sat on his bed, thinking of what to do to prepare for the exams. He thought about what Bakugo would do then, and realized what he should do. Izuku got to training with his quirk, preparing, hoping to be ready for the practical exam in two weeks. The two weeks passed in the blink of an eye as all the students arrived in UA for their exams. The written exam was simple for many of the students, while others didn't have as great of a time. Much to their surprise, the practical exam would take place right after the written one. Once all of the students finished their written exam, Class 1A was brought to a large training area. The class huddled together, and in front of them were all of their teachers. Yo, yo, yo! Present Mike here! Glad you all could make it! We will now begin explaining the rules! Present Mike yells out flamboyantly. Uh, you will all be paired into teams of two. Those two teams will have to face an assigned teacher and either defeat them in battle or escape through a special exit on the training field. The students were all shocked to hear the rules of the practical exam. They would be going against their teachers. I will announce teams and who they're fighting against. The class listened to the names listed, hoping to have a good matchup. Mina and Denki versus Nezu. Koda and Jiro versus Present Mike. Minoru and Sero versus Midnight. Bakugo and Tsuyu versus All Might. Todoroki and Yaoyorozu versus Eraserhead. Kirishima and Sato versus Cementos. Shoji and Hagakure versus Snipe. Aoyama and Uraraka versus Thirteen. Ida and Ojiro versus Power Loader, and finally, Izuku and Fumikage versus Ectoplasm. Izuku leaves the area with Fumikage as they're brought to the training area they'll be taking their test in. They're brought inside what looks to be a giant metallic building. Izuku was wondering if he could finally put the product of his two weeks of training to use. During the two weeks, Izuku had spent most of his time training with his quirk. During that time, he had discovered a new skill with his quirk he hoped he could make use of here. You ready? Izuku questioned Fumikage not long after the test had begun. Yes, although we should try and establish a plan. Will we try to stop the teacher, or should we focus on getting to the exit? Izuku considered both ideas trying to devise a plan, but his planning process was interrupted by the voice of Ectoplasm interrupting them. This is no time to be in your own head. The voice echoed throughout the room as tens of clones formed around the two students. Midoriya and Tokoyami quickly get on the defensive as Tokoyami summons a dark shadow to attack a few of the teacher's clones. Izuku runs towards one of the clones to initiate hand-to-hand -hand combat with them. Izuku tries fighting the teacher, throwing a punch only for the clone to avoid his punch and elbow Izuku in the side. If you think you can beat me in a hand-to-hand -hand fight, you will be mistaken. Ectoplasm's deep voice echoed. Izuku leaps back from Ectoplasm in time to dodge a swift attack by Dark Shadow, destroying Ectoplasm's clone. Don't try to beat them in a fight. Just quickly overwhelm them. They aren't durable at all. Dark Shadow explains quickly before attacking another clone. Izuku, taking Dark Shadow's advice, quickly sneak attacks another clone so Tokoyami can take out the other clones with Dark Shadow. After defeating the clones in the room, they run through the hallway, trying to find the next room and hoping to find the exit soon. As they run down the hallway, five more clones appear in their path. Izuku slides on the ground and trips two of the clones before grabbing a third one, activating his quirk to decay the clone. Tokoyami can destroy the remaining clones using Dark Shadow as they can swiftly clear the area. Good work. Tokoyami compliments Izuku's fighting skills. Thanks, but you and Dark Shadow are doing much more work. We've cleared about half of Ectoplasm's clones. He should be limited on how many more he can use for the rest of this test. Tokoyami explains. Do you think he has some trap in mind? Izuku asks. It's entirely possible. He is a pro hero after all. Midoriya and Tokoyami continue down the hallway and find themselves in a large cylindrical room. At the other side of the room, they can see what they assume to be Ectoplasm's real body standing, blocking the exit. Good work making it this far, both of you. But your test will end here. Ectoplasm states before shooting out the material for his clones out of his mouth. Out of the ectoplasm he shoots out, it forms two giant clones of himself, taking up nearly all the space in the room. 
Using the remaining clones I am allowed to make, I summon both of these giant clones. I won't be able to summon any more clones after both of these. Ectoplasm explains. One of the giant clones attacks both Tokoyami and Izuku. Tokoyami quickly uses Dark Shadow to push Izuku out of the way of the attack as the hand crushes down. The hand molds around Tokoyami, entrapping him inside the giant clone, leaving only parts of Fumikage's body showing. The second giant clone goes for an attack at Midoriya. Izuku starts running to avoid the hand and nearly avoids the attack. He reaches to touch the giant clone's hand to try and activate his quirk on the monster, and it slowly starts to decay. Izuku, quick, decay this one! Tokoyami calls out, wanting to be freed from the giant's trap. I, I can't! I might accidentally decay you with the clone! Izuku yells out. Midoriya keeps running to avoid the remaining giant clone's attacks as he tries his best to devise a plan. He could use his quirk to try and make an escape, but there's no way of knowing he'll be able to get past the real ectoplasm. Izuku tries thinking of how he could get Tokoyami's dark shadow to help, and he comes to a realization. If he could decay the lights at the top of the ceiling, then dark shadow might just be strong enough to destroy the big clone. This was Izuku's one shot. Midoriya, using his knowledge of parkour, grabs up on the ledge to the floor above him. He climbs up and he looks up to the lights on the ceiling. Izuku touches the wall and focuses on activating his quirk on specific objects. This was what he spent the past two weeks training on with his quirk. This new skill to decay specific things was still unmastered. He was too nervous to try it on the giant clone and the slight chance he messed up and decayed Tokoyami. But here, he has room for error. He focuses on the spread of his decay to reach the ceiling from the wall he was touching and the decay of the lights in the ceiling. The decay reached the lights and all the lights in the room shut off, leaving them all in a pitch black room with the only remaining lights in the room being the ones decorating the exit. Izuku could hear Dark Shadow roar, sounding like a dangerous monster. A screech followed the sounds of a large battle between it and the giant ectoplasm clone. Wasting no time, Izuku ran down to the bottom floor, and using the light of the exit signs as his guide, he ran through the exit doors, passing the test for both Tokoyami and him. Thankfully, Tokoyami could get control over Dark Shadow once the giant clone was defeated. Drop a comment about your favorite series or suggestions. Thanks to our team for another amazing video. If you're interested in joining our team and you're 16 years of age or older, check out the link in the description. Thank you for watching till the end, and have a fantastic day.